Hello and welcome back to Calathea. In the last episode we built this oil industry area across the northernmost bay of the map. It's producing and exporting a huge amount of oil and we also have a cargo ferry harbour up here for importing and exporting goods, plus a shipyard unique factory. I have made a few adjustments since the last episode just to help with traffic flow both in this area and across the rest of the map. I've also moved a few of the assets around to put the primary and secondary parts of the process closer together so that the trucks aren't having to go so far to get to the next part of the process and so they're not getting stuck in the queue for the cargo harbour. Previously we just had a simple roundabout here with a regular six lane road coming through from this highway up here but now I've extended this highway all the way down to the end here and it has improved the traffic flow massively. Before I changed this highway, the queue to get up to this part of the map stretched all the way back to the San Francisco district back here. So the fact that there's no cars queuing now is a massive win. I've also put in a slip road to ease this junction and it seems to be working with feeding trucks off rather than having to go through the highway intersection. I added in a metro route that goes from this district over here to the oil industry area so that it takes the private vehicles off the road and I also added a footpath going from the edge of this district through to where the barracks and the main head office are so that anyone who lives down this end can get here on foot much quicker. All of these things seem to have really helped with the traffic although the road down the centre of this part of the industry area is still pretty bad because we have a huge amount of import trucks coming out of the cargo harbour so they kind of just queue up along this road until they can get through but it's about as good as I'm going to get right now. Since the last episode I have come in and added some more houses to some of the districts up this end of the map. For example these two districts down here are now pretty much sitting right up against each other and this Spanish inspired village that was the first build in this series I've added loads more houses around the edge it now goes all the way up to the train station and I've even added a small amount of high density up near the station. In today's episode we're going to be working on a side of the map that we haven't worked on yet at all and that is the other side of this mountain range here. So there's not much buildable land around here but there is a few pockets on the other side that have plenty of room to make some very interesting builds and today we're going to be building a tourism centre with some hotels. We're going to be working with this piece of land over here it's going to have its own highway access and train station so that we can link it up to the rest of the city but it's going to feel a lot more exclusive and hidden away so it feels more of a holiday destination. It's not going to be massive but there's plenty of beach area around the bay and I'm also going to be doing a small amount of high density residential over here that we're going to pretend is for the workers in this kind of resort town. This build is partially inspired by a place called Port Sawyer in Mallorca, somewhere that I used to go with my family quite a lot as a child and it's kind of a semi-touristy Spanish town in a bay that's shaped very much like this one and there's elements that I'm going to be taking from that but I'm not going to go full Spanish with this one I'm going to go tourist crazy and this is going to be a lot more bright lights and billboards than any of the other districts have done so far so I'm going to put in the highway access and the roadmap and walk you through what I've got planned Thank you. 
so here is the rough plan for this bay. I'm working with some very, very slope terrain here. So this is going to be quite challenging for me, but I'm quite excited to try something different with this build. So there's going to be three tiers of mostly commercial and parks and unique buildings and hotels. It's going to be a small amount of residential dotted in because if there's no residential at all, then people are going to be traveling from miles away to come here to work. So I need to make sure there's some people living over here. I've got an area marked out for the train station up here. And there's a couple of areas like this part here and this big bit over here that I flattened out for a couple of potential uses. This one here I'm fairly sure I want to do some sort of unique building or fancy hotel. And this one over here I thought I wanted to do the residences over here but actually they have a really great view over the bay so I don't know whether it might be better to put a hotel at the end maybe and the residence is closer to the highway. I can see that this highway exit might cause us problems in the future because it's very very small. I may have to swap it out for a different one but I didn't want to just keep using the same highway access over and over again and also we're working with very limited space here because the sea is right here. I couldn't quite use some of the massive interchanges that I've used in the past. So we'll see how we get on with this one. It might be all right, it might not be. I've used this interchange quite a lot and depending on what the access is like through other routes, sometimes it can be okay. And this is another intersection that I can see potentially causing us problems. It's a very, very small roundabout, but I couldn't really fit much else in this space. So I'm hoping that it will be all right. I may have to change it out for something different in the future, but I didn't want a six lane road going all the way around here because it would have taken up way too much space. I'm going to be utilizing keys quite a lot to make sure that there's no jagged edges on the terrain because this is going to be one of the tourism areas i want to make sure that it is polished and upmarket and looks like a real holiday destination there's a few types of public transport that i haven't used at all yet two of these being trams and monorails i would like to use one of these in this build and I think the one I want to use for this will be trams but I've got to figure out a way of putting it in first. So let's get stuck into building.
Okay, so I think I'm finished with my tourism district. I had a lot of fun making this. I used a lot of things that I wouldn't normally use in my builds. A lot of the hotels that I don't normally get to and some commercial buildings that I wouldn't really have a place for anywhere else in Calathea. So this road as you come in is actually faring quite well. Once I sorted out the roundabout and figured out the best settings for the intersections to have, it flows pretty smoothly. Obviously the cars have to stop as they get down to this intersection here, but it really doesn't cause that much of a hold up at all. So as you come down this quite steep slope, you've got a kind of old quarter off to the right. I didn't want to do too much of that Spanish influence in this district, but I wanted to have one area that had a little nod to it. So I got these unique buildings off of the workshop. I thought the roofs fit that kind of Spanish theme. So, so this is kind of the only area in this district that has that kind of Mediterranean feel. There's a little tram turning circle out the front with some rocks and a lot of tree detailing. I've also used these keys all over this district. They're from the workshop and they have a little stone bit in the middle. I don't know whether people will actually use these keys to walk from place to place because they kind of run along the pavements in most places and I don't think they're actually connected up to anything for them to get onto them, but at least they look nice. Down here is a floating restaurant. This is the same one that I used in Primrose Heights. I thought it would fit in quite well here as well. It's very classy, but I wanted this bay to feel really busy because some of the places that I've been like this before, there's so much going on and there's so many things in the water that I wanted it to have some sort of authenticity. I've used these shopping malls buildings a lot in this build. They're low density commercial, so they don't quite put as much pressure on the imports as the high density commercial does, but they're still fairly big buildings. So I've tried to put them in varied formations, some taller, some shorter. Some of them look more like restaurants like this one here. And some of them have a little bit of detailing outside. And then I've also got a few office blocks dotted around and some high density commercial from the modern city centers pack. This is a hotel commercial building from the tourist specialization. So it doesn't really function as a hotel in the same way that the actual hotels do, but it still looks like one. Up here is much of the same. There's some leisure and tourism buildings dotted in with some regular commercial and a lot more touristy and leisure stuff up here. This is the deluxe hotel. I would rarely ever get to the point of actually being able to put this hotel in in any of my other builds so I thought why not use it here. It's very very big and as you come down on the train it's the first thing that you see coming in so it's very very grand. And I tried to make the logo and colors fit in with the Calathea theme. So I used this kind of blue color. It's meant to be a bit more blue than that, but it looks really green on this building for some reason. I wanted it to match the kind of orange and blues that have been a running theme throughout this build. And obviously I had to go with the palm tree logo as well because it is a tropical build. So the hotels aren't exactly very popular because it doesn't actually register the shopping malls and the offices around it but I'm not too fussed about that because I'm not looking to like upgrade on them or anything because they're already at level five so they're kind of here just purely for aesthetics at this point. There is some facility buildings up here I've kind of crammed them all in one space there's a hospital, a police station, fire station, a primary school and an exhibition hall. Now this comes from the same creative that's made a lot of the other things that I've used in this build so far I'm not sure exactly what it functions as, but it's a pretty cool looking building. And I thought it looked quite nice with the primary school next to it. And I wanted something a little bit bigger to put up here because otherwise this gap would have looked really empty if it was just all small buildings. Lots of shopping malls and a few offices on this middle level. And then down here is the kind of focal point of this bay. It's, I believe the spa hotel. And I had to do a lot of adjustments to fit this in because it's very, very big. I think I just about got it to fit in with a little bit of a bump at the back, but you can't really notice it very much. And this tennis court complex is from the workshop. It's not functional, but I thought having a tennis court complex next to a really fancy hotel is probably something you'd see in the real world. The next to it is a big parking lot. It kind of filled this awkward large gap at the back here. And then this is one of the shopping malls from the shopping malls DLC. I love these open air shopping malls. I really wanted to put the two different ones next to each other so they kind of join up and go all the way along, but I couldn't fit two in this space and they also kind of work better 
when they're in a square block rather than this kind of rounded shape. So I put it off at a bit of an angle and connected it up to the car park on this side. Around here is a bit of a marina. Like I mentioned earlier, I've been to places like this in real life and these kind of touristy bays get so filled up with boats. They either belong to the people that live there or you know, rich people that have second holiday homes there or they can be rented out by tourists. So I didn't want to go too crazy and fill it up too much. I thought putting a few marinas across here would look good. There's a few more touristy bits down here. There are some more of these hotels. The lighting is awful from this side, but they have a bit of detailing on the back. And I tried to fill all the areas in between the buildings and the keys with trees, just to soften up the back of them a little bit. I actually really, really like this hotel. I love this little swimming pool and cabana type thing out the back. I think that's really neat. I've never noticed how nice that asset is before. So I'm glad that I'm getting to use things that are a little bit different in this build. Lots more shopping mall stuff up here, just because the buildings fit so nicely in this kind of district. And then along the back row is the houses. Now I decided to put them actually in the district rather than off on a separate part. One, because filling this row with commercial buildings would have put so much strain onto the import system and there would have been so many cars on the road to get produce in. I didn't want to make it super super busy so I thought I'd put houses up here for the people that work in this district and then of course if you've got houses you need all the stuff that goes along with that so there is a tiny secondary school up this end that's from the workshop it's a little bit grotty but it's the smallest one that would fit in that space so I don't really mind and obviously there's a basketball court next to it for a little bit of entertainment I tried to use a lot of the same residential assets that I've used so far put a lot of them in pairs and kind of step them up. Some of you might think it looks a bit silly, but I kind of like the way that it cascades down. It's sort of reminiscent of the greenery that's flowing over the front of the balconies. So I thought I'd put a few of them in here. And then there's some more housing down the back here. And then around the back here is the station. So this is a train, tram, bus, transport hub. I've never used it before because I've only just got the mass transit DLC but I really, really like it. It's very compact, very neat, and it's getting a lot of views. I mean, you can see how many people just came out of the station just then, and a lot of people are going back into the tram station to get the tram down to the front of the bay, and the trams are overrun. I don't want to put any more on because they're not going to be able to move, but there's a lot of people trying to use it. I forgot that you actually need to put the depot in, and the depot is huge. So I had to kind of carve out a space in the back for it and kind of tuck it behind. And I thought I'd put a recycling center while I was back there too, because it's a long way to get to the other recycling centers in the city. So it doesn't look too nice as you come in, but it means that it's all tucked away in one place, away from the rest of the district. So it's not going to be an eyesore for the tourists. And it's kind of blocked by these houses anyway, so you can't really see it from down here. I mean, maybe at this kind of angle you could, but people on the ground are never gonna be able to see up there over these buildings. Last thing to mention is these two hotels here. This is a massive, massive asset, and it kind of blocks the skyline a little bit, but it also makes a statement and really commands the skyline. Getting this hotel up on the end of the bay is partially inspired by the Jumeirah Hotel in Port Soyer. It's up on this really high cliff on the mouth of the bay and on one side looks out over the bay and the mountains and then on the other side looks out over the sea and it is stunning. Obviously this land isn't quite as high up as that but it's a small nod to that hotel. I put this lookout cafe around here that's been used in a few different places so far and I also put a swimming pool park asset back here too, kind of pretending that this is part of the hotel ground. Obviously it isn't and anyone can just walk up here but I thought it looked like the kind of thing you'd find out at the back of a hotel. But imagine being in the swimming pool and having this view out here, I mean that would be amazing. So I thought I'd give them something around there just so they have more people coming to the hotel. And then the last one is this ocean resort. I've never actually used this one before because I haven't got high enough in the hotel chain to be able to do it. But it was a bit tricky to get in because whatever level of terrain you put it in at, it will always be sinking. And then you have to raise the road that it's on so that it's not sinking. But I wonder how that's supposed to work if you don't have Move It. Because obviously Move It is a mod and it's not 
in the game naturally. I do wonder how unmodded players are able to use these assets because it just kind of immediately says that they're sinking. But anyway, I found a way to make it work and I put it down on the secondary road down here. So both the hotels are in one place. This road is a little bit steep but it's not stopped anyone from driving down it. It's the only way I could get it to fit down there without adding too many roads to this intersection here because it is a little bit busy. There's already five roads and a tram going through it. I didn't want to add any extra stress to it. I nearly forgot to mention these functioning beaches. They're the same assets that we used in Primrose Heights. Obviously, those people aren't meant to be in the sea, um, but the asset is really, really long and I think it needs a lot more of a gentle, sloping beach towards the sea. There just wasn't that much space here. So yeah, the people are all in the sea, but they're not going to drown or anything. It just looks a little bit funny watching them all walk around under the water. But it's drawing a lot of people in and I got rid of the parking spaces because it was a bit of an eyesore. I got that tip from Fear Candy from one of her builds in Solitude. And I never thought to remove parking spaces on things like this, but it makes it look so much better not having cars crowding up the beach. So as you can see, there's loads of people using the trams. These people are all waiting to go back up to the train station. Port Sawyer actually has a trolley or tram that runs along the road halfway around the bay. So that's why I've added this tram road in all the way around. I went in and did the first person view of the tram ride and it actually looks really similar and it's good to see that people are coming to this district already either as tourists or to work or to live so I'm pretty happy with what I've done today. I did check the train line to see if putting the station in would pull the line all the way around the mountain but unfortunately it's not long enough to do that yet but there will be more builds on this side of the peninsula so it will eventually go all the way around once we've got those stations in as well. Obviously I put this road in thinking that I was going to build down here but actually I don't feel like I need to because there is so much crammed into this district already. I'm going to save that for another day. I may come in in between episodes and do a residential build off camera just because they're still demanding housing so I'm going to leave that piece of land for now. But anyway I think I'm going to end this episode here. I'm so happy that I managed to cram so much into this space and it was nice working on a side of the map that we haven't worked on yet and doing something totally far removed from both the rest of the city physically and also architecturally, aesthetically and tastefully let's say because I wouldn't be having this many flashing lights and billboards in many other places in Calathea so those things are going to stay in these touristy areas but it was fun to build. But for now thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.